good morning uh, on this very wet, rainy, cold and cloudy uh, winter day, although it doesn't feel like winter, it's actually the longest day of the year uh, here in Sweden. Um, the sun hasn't been out for a, for some weeks now, ever since we got here. Uh, amazing, uh, but um, musically uh, we can always escape and uh, uh, you know uh, listen to soundscapes that take us away to these places where we are, where we are uh, beyond any season, um, any rain, any sunshine, or whatever. Now, for any crowd rock. Cosmic Lover, uh, you have the, um, the album Agire by Popol Vuh from the film Agire. Now I have, um, I did a blog post uh, some time ago about his core organ, uh, you know the characteristic sound on that album, the, eth <coughs> the ethereal quality to it. Um, that is for me one of the most interesting sounds in music ever. Um, personally, uh, an electronic sound can never reach this sort of ethereal level as um, can the human voice do, or perhaps some sort of instrument. But uh, since that instrument was a combination, and uh, I just need to remind myself. Uh, so <clears throat> this is how it was. The, um, Organ was actually uh, uh, made by, um, uh, created by a man called Herbert Prush, and it was stored in a Bavarian studio in, uh, I mean, in Munich, in the Bavaria, Germany. Um, I have been, uh, by the way, uh, tried to find any sort of information on this, but there's not much. There's not even a photograph. Um, and um, so this organ, which was made by Herbert Prush, was stored in a, in a Munich studio. <clears throat> and the first time it was used, maybe the first time it was used in a recording or in a, some kind of a uh, public way was when uh, a man called um, Jimmy Jackson um, used it on uh, Amundul's album uh, Tanz der Lemminge. The dance of the lemmings. So um, the core organ worked in this manner. It was um, yeah, sounds that were recorded on um, uh, three dozen of dozens of tapes. That makes it thir thirty-six uh, tapes um, that were hooked on like an axis. So um, there was this axis, and there you have like thirty-six wheels uh, and they all turn together continuously um, which made this sort of haunting ethereal sound to it and it was uh, a sample unit basically it was uh, uh, core uh, samples on it so um, apparently um, I mean some keys were colored uh, on the organ to match those that didn't work and um, it, it must have given a special look to the organ, but also um, a sort of a hint that it wasn't repaired. It was, I think it was from the information I found, a unit that was made. And, you know, this Jimmy Jackson used it. And then, of course, Florian Fricke used it on Popol's Wook's album. I will come back to that. But it wasn't anyone who was, uh, there wasn't anyone who was taking care of it or being responsible for it. And, and such. So I uh, had broken keys and they were colored. Um, the organ is supposed to be in some museum today, these days. Uh, th there's no information about it. Um, okay, so um, there was a, like an interview snip, snippet um, with uh, Renate Knaup, Knaup from Amandul, the singer the female singer and she said that it was a large ancient Mellotron type instrument that had been designed by some crazy instrument builder okay I mean <clears throat> I uh, first of all uh, Florian Fricke Popol View is for me 
year zero in music. Like everything before is the sort of the old era and everything after that is the new era, the new dawn of it. Because um, first of all Florian Fricke was um, one of the first in Europe to own a Moog synthesizer which must have been really expensive at the time. Today you can buy uh, houses for those money and if you include the shipping to uh, a village outside of Munich but apparently his parents were well off and you know and he had traveled to to places like uh, uh, India or Afghanistan I think he was there with his parents during his youth so they must have been like well off and um, um, people who are also willing to invest in experiences which is good so anyway and he used that for the first two albums which were uh, of course uh, Affenstunde and uh, in, in the Garden Paranos Pharaohs in the Pharaoh's Garden uh, but after that he sort of he was he had deployed I mean depleted every uh, sort of sound aspect to it uh, and apparently gave it away to Klaus Schulze now in my head that doesn't make up because how can you give something it's like me giving you two houses today one house because I I'm you know I want to move away but I just don't want to sell the house so here you have the house. Uh, but that's the way the story goes, maybe they don't want to be um, saying that it was sold, but on the other hand, uh, it can be true because uh, Flo um, Klaus Schulze wasn't a rich man at the time, um, and, um, and Florian Fricke was a spiritual mystic man, so I think he, he, he was the kind of person who would have done that sort of thing and given away. Okay, so let's let's go back. Um, Jimmy Jackson had, had used the core organ on uh, Amondul's uh, album. Uh, did I say yeah, Tanz der Leminge? Um, <clears throat> okay, and Renat Knaup's quote again from this interview piece was that it was a large ancient Mellotron type instrument that had been designed by some crazy instrument builder. So during this time. Uh, in the early 70s, uh, Werner Herzog was looking for, um, for a film score and he went to Rome and hoped that uh, Ennio Morricone would do something but that didn't work out uh, and he had heard about um, Florian Fricke and they sort of got together and um, yeah, they, um, they said yeah we're gonna do this now, uh, in my head, this is like, because that album is so um, special to me, I mean, all this music is special, but for many other people, and you all, when something is special, I always think that, oh, it was made under these sort of kind of magic moments where like a muse would come to the people and like infect them with some um, divine creativity, but um, there's also a possibility that somebody just like did it and it turned out to be something people enjoy and the person who did it doesn't actually feel so much for it. We can see that in the instances of Bo Hansson. There was a documentary recently on Swedish television and um, I don't know, like I really never believe when a, like a musician and a Klaus Schulze for that matter who also in a classic Krautrock documentary said something that, oh, you know, that's rubbish what we did back then. I think they're just trying to distance them, themselves from the fact of the magic or maybe they are just like autom automatons who make this great music um, and there's no middle way. So, uh, but I think they just want to sort of like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been done and we did that. Anyway, here's an account of where um, Florian uh, Fricke demystifies the whole um, uh, whole thing. So um, he says ba basically that um, yeah, Herzog was looking for um, for a musician. I mean, a composer, and he found none. You know, the Ennio Morricone thing didn't work out or something. Uh, and they met through a mutual uh, acquaintances acquaintance. Um, and um, yeah, back in Munich they. Um, 
got together and um, uh, Frick uh, began to record. Um, yeah, he heard some of the things he had made, recorded, and he liked it and sort of it went on. Um, when uh, Amonduli 1972 recorded Wolf City, uh, Florian Fricke was um, actually involved because he loaned out his Moog before he gave it away to uh, Klaus Schulze. And uh, it was 1972 then, during the recording of Wolf City by Amondul that Florian Fricke first heard this core organ. And uh, you know, he saw Jimmy Jackson was a guest musician. And um, so let's see. Um, in Aguirre, I just want to men mention the other musicians involved in the album. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, here we have, of course, uh, let me pronounce the name right Daniel uh, Fischelscher. Um, you know, the, hey, well, he's bald now. Um, cool guy, cool man. And there was a video on YouTube uh, some time ago where he played the guitar and talked about his, uh, you know, becoming a musician and all that and that video disappeared. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. It was like a precious information for all of us uh, Krautrock fans. So he played the guitar, of course, and um, we, yeah, we love that. And the rhythms were made by Holger Trultz. Um, now, uh, I think also there was some uh, um, miss, um, um, like cr the credits on the Aguirre album were wrong because um, the album was released in 1976, four years after the uh, recording of the music and the film premiere. Uh, and this was of course some sort of a record label uh, jungle um, doo -doo 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 -doo, because Florian had a deal with the guy uh, with the Rolf Ulrich Kaisers or records of course we all know about that and it's a uh, sub label Pilz um, and the, the soundtrack Aguirre sort of made up for a deal they had and um, Florian owned it to him in a, some sort of some sort of a record label uh, record label mess, um, and um, this is nice. This is what uh, Florian Fricke had to say about it, also in a uh, interview snip, snippet that I uh, plucked out. Uh, he said, "Don't ask me anything about those confusing facts about my musical uh, record career." I'm not part of that. The music industry has created these unfortunate circumstances and if I would start talking about this in detail I would have to mention names and persons and people so I'm trying to avoid that insofar that some of these are not even living in our country anymore. Um, I think this was in German so it's been translated. Uh, yeah, in my blog post I have the link to the original article, uh, I think it was at Eurock.com, a site that you probably have stumbled upon if you've been googling around for Krautrock um, legendary persons in some way. Okay, um, why, why this video, why, why this uh, video about this core organ, because um, as I said, the sound is very special to me, as is the album, as is all his albums, um, like Hosiana Mantra, for example. I mean, those albums are, as I said, it's year zero for me. And then also because, um, in some way, there, there, there's not much to, to see about him. I, there are no interviews with Florian Fricke. I remember, maybe it was 2008 or nine. Mm, back sort of in the early days of YouTube there was a video or something and a video interview um, from the late 80s or something and he was smoking and uh, looking pretty um, uh, what do you say um, uh, deteriorated but you know like um, yeah maybe some people are affected by smoking more than others but anyway there's not much information 
uh, where is that organ? I mean, really, if I knew where it was and I was on a road trip through Europe or something, I would head that way. Um, because that sound has uh, uh, given me moments of, you know, for example, when I've been lying down with my headphones and like really getting lost in the, in the soundscape, or if I've been driving a car or walking in the mountains, um, you know, it's, it, it follows me through life and it does that for many other people. Um, I mean, the, the guitar player used the Fender Stratocaster or white, uh, white guitar, I think. It doesn't matter, those things you can find easily. But this is special. I mean, it was built some, by some crazy instrument builder. Come on. So uh, my hopes are, for example, that maybe some of you watching this video will know something that I missed. Uh, or that we can just, you know, sort of share this fascin fascination, not only about the artists, but uh, about this instrument and this album. Uh, and also because it's, um, today is the 22nd of December and he's, uh, uh, Florian passed away on the 29th uh, of December 2001, so this is a week before his, um, uh, do you call it Memo Memorial Day? Uh, well, f yeah, I um, if I if I remember if I have the um, um, opportunity, I play Popol Vuh music, um, and I'm glad my wife likes the music too, and our little baby daughter is also happy with having um, <laughs> his uh, Affenstunde or something playing in the background and smiling. So um, that's that. Um, I did this post, blog post, and uh, where I sort of, um, I found random sort of bits and pieces, some in German, uh, some in English, uh, and put them together in a consistent way, as best as I can. I will link to that below. Um, and yeah. Um, just some interesting facts. I mentioned that um, the album credits were wrong on the on the sleeve when it was released. Well, uh, the the singer on the album Hosiana Mantra, uh, Jong Jun, uh, she wasn't on this album at all, but she was given uh, credit. And um, the funny thing is also that this album, as you can see the cover. Uh, with this sort of beautiful painting of a pond with uh, flamingo birds or swans or something. Um, it doesn't have any connotation or, 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 or uh, reference to the film Aguirre. None at all. It's, it's beautiful but it doesn't have any connection. And uh, let's see if there was some sort of... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, and in the credits there also was no mention of uh, the Moog 3 used on the album or the core organ. Uh, it was a messy release, basically, a very messy release. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering sort of what, 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 what Florian thought about the album. Um, uh, I think it was more, it's become alive, like in this decade after his death. Uh, people are discovering this kind of music because uh, because of the internet, because of uh, um, like all the file sharing possibilities that really blow the minds of young people. You know, maybe they watch a film or just hear a bit, and then they look up an artist and they find more and more and more. And uh, many of those uh, albums are not available in the, in the common stores or. Uh, such, uh, but now they are on iTunes, of course. So when I was discovering this, uh, the, it wasn't so. It was all about those peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing programs, softwares. Um, yeah. Yeah, and also I just looked at this. That uh, the sad thing is that it's hard to like re make this sound um, like an you can't just take an organ and do it you can't you can't do it through software and 
Oh, sorry, I think the time uh, went out, uh, so I must have been talking already for 20 minutes. I'm so into this, so I'm really not uh, keeping track of time, so I would just go back to where it was cut. Um, um, yeah, we will not ever hear this sound again, really. Um, you can't reproduce it with the software instrument, you can't just take an organ on stage. Uh, so this sound we have, like in, in, in the Aguirre and especially in the title tracks, the three parts, it, it's unique. I mean, it's really like, um, it should be put on a museum somewhere. <clears throat> so that's that. I love, um, I love this um, music that Florian Fricke, Daniel uh, Fischelscher, John Yoon and all those Holger uh, Trolls and all those people involved in Popolvuk made. Uh, and especially Florian Fricke and uh, th this video is dedicated to him uh, in, uh, in remembrance of his uh, um, passing away uh, which will be 15 years ago in about a week yeah exactly a week um, so yeah that's that for for all of you music lovers uh, take care and all the best and I wish you also a, a, like made a new season, new, the new cycle of light, the new year really bring uh, power and health and all the best to you and the people close to you and so we can all make a better world and um, perhaps better music and uh, do some interesting things with what we have. Take care and all the best.